So let's continue on with another shear here on the great book by Rabbi, not Rabbi, sorry, by Reb Yaakov Cronenberg, Jewish astrologer. He's really spent a lot of time with this, and this is a deep subject. So we discussed over here yesterday in the last year the concept of the uh, of Yud K Vav K, which is over here on this side. It's hard to keep turning this like this. At any rate, Yud K Vav K. And that was the beginning of the chart of Adam Arishon. So let's see what he's actually talking about, because now we're going to get into the depth of the concept that comes out of this famous Sefer, which is Sefer Yitzira, which is a real puzzle. Because the idea in this Sefer is, is that this is the Sefer, the closest best understanding we can, we, that we have to the tool, as if it was possible to say that, that the Almighty used to create the world. So let's see, before we start with the book, let's take a bit, uh, uh, talk a bit about the chart of the first man, Adam and Rishon. Adam has five levels in his chart, and we mentioned that before. And so say, for example, where are we in yud ke vav -ke? Where are you? yud ke vav -ke. Here it is right here. So we mentioned before that this refers to Reuven and Aries, and it's the house of life. So it's the, also, it has these combinations of the name Adni, which is very important in Kabbalah. We may have talked about it, maybe not. Let's read, with this. let's try to read now a little bit what of, of, of Rabbi Yaakov Cronenberg has said, let me see if I can get this lined up. He says the first two levels, starting from the inner circle outwards, so he says they're talking from the inner, is, is something the nations of the world also have. So we have said previously there's a difference between Jewish astrology. The main difference between Jewish astrology is, is that we have the name Yudke Vavke and they don't. They don't recognize that, that name, just like uh, Par uh, Paro, Pharaoh. He didn't recognize it either. So he says, he said, but we're talking from the inner inner part. So let's look at the inner part. And here is our Yud Vavke right here. So the inner part is the house of life and the planets, the planetary, the planets over the head of Abba Marijan was the constellation of Aries. Okay, nobody disagrees with the constellations and the concept that we're talking about. There are no astronomers, no scientists. Nobody disagrees with these ideas. What we call them and what we what it means to us, that's all becomes more subjective, and that's where astrology comes in. But here now we have the concept, the concept changing of the light shining on us through the permutations of the name of Hashem. Now going back onto it again. So the first two houses, which in that case are the house of life and also called Aries, this is also, this is Gentile uh, astrology as well. Our constellation signs with their respective ruling planets. So let me see, it goes also on the first level are the houses and on the second level are the constellations, the signs with the respective ruling planets. So there you have the first level is the house of life that gives us something about it. And as we said before, this is Aries in the court. For example, in the first level, the house, we have the first house of life with Aries rising on the east. That's the left side. Rubul by Mars, which is ruled by Mars. So you have to understand that everywhere, and I think we've gotten to this before, I hope we have, that every house has a ruling planet. So every sign has a ruling planet. So for me, that I'm either an Aquarius or a Capricorn, the ruling planet there is Saturn. So therefore, my, where my Saturn would be would be a major part of the, part of the energy uh, that I have. So the first two levels basically contain all of Western astrology with the houses, signs, and planets. Judaism goes further and includes three more levels. We have already discussed and shown six lectures, uh, see lectures, basic model of the universe. He had this previous that in the Torah, all the planets, constellations, and galaxies in our universe are placed in the second palace of the heavens of the lowest world of Asiya action. Now let's read it again. So we talked about this apparently, but I pretty much forgot. We have already discussed and, and shown. So he says that the Torah, all the planets that in the Torah, all the planets, that is the planets, the, we understand the planets, the Koch Lechet, those are the planets, Mars, Jupiter, like that. And the constellations, which are like Aries and Taurus, and galaxies in our universe are placed in the second palace, which is the second, the second level down below. Of the lowest world, 
of our world, which is a siya, which is the world of action. Siya means doing things. So the world of a siya, of action, is divided into heaven and earth, and both are further subdivided into seven subworlds each. Now let's try to read that again. It's a little hard for me. This world, that's the world that we live in. The world of Asiya is divided into heaven and earth. Okay, we understand there's up above and there's down below. And both are further divided into seven sub subworlds each. That is the heavens, seven subworlds in the heavens, seven subworlds in the in the earth. The seven subdivisions, the heaven part of the world of Asiya are known as the palaces or firmaments. The second palace slash firmament is called Rikia, and it is there that all of astrology is placed. Now, this is really a little bit beyond me. If he, he, he This is the deeper Kabbalah here. So he says, again, the second palace, which is the firmament of the world of physicality, is called Rikia. So this Rikia is a concept of heaven, and it is there that all of astrology is placed. So there are another five palaces that are above the Rikia, that is the Rikia level in the lowest world of Asiya, sending down their energies. And as we say before, as we're trying to explain, that the world exists on the energy of God, both from within the world itself, that is, he shines from inside out through all reality, but also shines from outside in at the same time into the reality that we have. And above the world of Asiya, there are more spiritual worlds. So this, they gets higher and higher. They go more, less and less physical. There are the world of formation, which is called Yitzira in Hebrew. The world of creation, which is called Berea in Hebrew. And the world of emanation, which is called Atsilus, which is, which is almost one with infinity. So this chart of Adam factors in these primal energies flowing down from these higher palaces and worlds by including them in the zodiac. And let's see it again. Now, in Jewish astrology, as we said before, the zodiac is not focused just on the lower two, which is the concept of the life force of the ram, of, of the Aries, the, the ram. Uh, but it's also... Uh, part of the constellation, which is called Aries, that's overhead at that time of uh, of the year. So, and come through people, so on and so forth, but there, uh, there is a hierarchy here. And we're saying like this is that this energy that you perceive down in these lower worlds, in these lower uh, aspects, are coming from the higher aspect, which in this case are combinations each month, a different one, of God's Name UK Bobke. Now let's see if I can find my way back to it. Okay, so there are another five palaces above the Rikia level in the lowest world of Asiya, sending down their energies, and above the world of Asiya, there are more spiritual worlds. These are the worlds of formation, the world of creation, and the world of emanation. So this chart of Adam Adan factors in these primal energies flowing down from these higher palaces and worlds by including them in the zodiac. So we see the zodiac, the Jewish zodiac, is not going to be like their zodiac because their zodiac is going to be missing the part, the top parts. So he says, we see in Adam's chart that the spot corresponding to each sign, that is the second level, is a tribe. And that's going to be the third level. So here we have we had the first level. Let's get back to Yud Kei You have to read it sideways. I'm really... Well, let's see if I can turn it around a little bit and see a little bit better. Here it is. So then you're going to get to a tribe. So this this is the third level. The tribe is going to be here in this case of Adam Arisha, and it's going to be the tribe of, uh, of Ruvain is going to be related to the energy that's coming through here. Let's read on a little bit more. So then he says, we see in those... So he says, we see in Adam's chart that corresponding to each sign is a tribe, and then also there's a specific jewel associated with it. So let's read it if we can. Here we hear Ruvain is the is a jewel which is called an Odin. Odin. Ruvain goes with the Odin. Let's go to the see what we got in the next level. If we can get to the next. So Reuven, the first son of Jacob, and is connected to Aries, and the jewel of Odin, which is red in color, and color red is the color of Mars. And Odin in Hebrew 
It shares its root meaning with the Hebrew word Adom, which really, or uh, which is Edom, also red. Now Taurus, which is the next sign, represents Shimon. And there is Levi, and then Yehuda, etc. So all the twelve tribes, you see the twelve tribes, are actually also matching with the seasons. Now this doesn't necessarily mean the season, because we think of seasons in certain terms of, of the sun, but there is much more. Of course, there's also the moon. The moon is also science, uh, shining on us, and that is a very heavy influence. But there's more than that. There's also the moment of birth, which is not a season, but is a moment which has a great deal to do with what is called the ascendant or person's rising sign, which is, according to uh, Mr. Cronenberg, that this is really the ichor of understanding, the root of understanding astrology. Now, we will cover this third level of tribes in future lessons and discuss the two approaches of associating areas, associating areas with either Ruvain or the more accepted Yehuda. So, we're going on, though. On the fourth and fifth level of Adam's chart, we get into the permutations of different names of God, of God's names. And on a simple level, a level, Adam's chart reflects the important principle in Jewish astrology, which is that all comes from God. And that you shouldn't think that the planets themselves make the decrees and run the world, which is what you see exactly in Indian astrology, which is a lot like, you know, what usable. But it's only usable in the first two levels. But to understand how God, Yudke Vavke, is manifesting himself in our world, you have to come over to here. So this is a deeper idea, much deeper than that. And that you shouldn't think that the planets themselves make the decrees and run the world. Adam Charge distills these higher influences down to two major names of God. One name, now this and this, it says is called Adni. I pronounce it Adni. You can pronounce it whatever you way. It's a gematria of 65. That's on the fourth level. And on the fifth level is the name Yudke Vavke. These names are holy, so we never pronounce them outside of very specific, specific circumstances. For teaching purposes, we use similar sounding names such as, for this, we says, for Adni, we use the word Adnut, so we use his word Adnut. And for uh, Hashem, for Havaya, we use the word Havaya. For that is the name Yudke Vavke. We knew the used name Havaya. Now, those of you who may know Hebrew can see how you could pronounce these differently, but we switch them because we don't. That's our common common denominator. So this is moving on in this year. It's going to be a little bit deep, and we're going to hope that you come along with me. This is Baruch Fleischman at the Tikkun Elevator Call-Out.